some news you can use. We've got a lot of stuff today to cover. In fact, we got a lot, we got more than enough to cover. Um, and if we don't have enough questions, I'll cover more of it. Um, some major announcements uh, and some major trends that we're seeing out there in the marketplace. Uh, there was a, an article on Fox Business News uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, about the top eight cities, the eight most expensive cities in the U.S. Um, having a real problem keeping their rental rates high and their rental prices high. In fact, for the last 12 months, collectively, the top eight cities in the U.S., the most expensive cities, have dropped 16.3% in rental rates. So in other words, the amount that the landlords are able to get has dropped precipitously. Leading the pack with the, the biggest drop was San Francisco. San Francisco is down 21% from a year ago. So if they were getting $3,000 rent a year ago, they're only getting $2,400 rent now. New York, Boston were 14.2 and 11% respectively drops. Uh, and then uh, San Jose, California down 10%. Prices have dropped in Seattle and Philadelphia 13% each and LA almost 10%. So it's, uh, it's quite a mixed bag because overall, the national rental rates have increased about 3.5% over the last year. And that takes into account all of these downward trending cities. So what we're seeing is that the medium priced and higher priced, uh, medium priced and lower price cities uh, are in fact increasing in price and the higher price cities are going down. So we've seen this before. This happened uh, when we had a rental peak, probably I saw it around 2001, 2002. And the highest and mid price markets went down, the lowest price stabilized and actually went up. So it was kind of an interesting thing. Now we're just seeing that the most expensive markets are dropping, um, but everybody else seems to be creeping up. There are uh, right now 40 cities that are in danger of, they're actually losing values uh, as measured over the last 60 days on prices of houses. And I'll talk about that. I probably won't get a chance to talk about that today unless we get more time. Because something else happened yesterday. The Federal Reserve Chairman uh, decided to, I don't know what was in his brain, but he shot his head off about when they're planning to increase interest rates. And he, he mentioned in 2023, early 2023, possibly late 2022, um, and as you might imagine, that set the market uh, on fire. And housing uh, rates or mortgage rates for houses went up from about 2.8 average to about 3.25 in about a 48 hour period of time. So rates for uh, buyers of houses have gone up and that's gonna increase the, uh, decrease the affordability, increase the payments that they're gonna have to make all just because somebody said something probably a year ahead of him needing to say it. So expect that the Fed or somebody in the government is going to try and throw some water on that to keep that from uh, spiking and ruining what's left of the housing market out there. Now, some good news. Uh, lumber prices have tumbled over the last 10 days. Um, they've dropped about a third in price on a wholesale level, as have gold. Uh, and some other key things. So we're also seeing kind of a dampening on the inflationary front, and that uh, is going to be helpful to all of us uh, in the housing market as well. So it's kind of a mixed bag out there. Uh, if we can keep the Fed from shooting their mouth off too soon, that would have really helped. But, um, and, and like I said, if I got time, I'll go into these 40 cities. I think you're gonna be surprised um, where there is a, a real uh, potential for uh, price drop. Actually, prices are dropping right now in some of these cities. Surprisingly, you will not find a California city on that list. Um, and the majority of them are frankly in Texas, which is a surprise to me. I thought it would be the other way around. 